Hi there. I got a sticker sent to me this week by Sean Weir, a fellow Canadian from New Brunswick, and he does not have a YouTube site. He's got a Facebook page, and you can look it up if you want. It's called Terms Turnings. I don't know how to leave you a link. I don't do Facebook, so I really have no idea how to give you a link, but the name is in the description box down below and right here, so you should be able to look it up if you want to see his work. And thank you, Sean, for sending it. It'll be on my virtual wall from now on. Now, if you are a YouTube creator and would like a logo of yours put on my wall, I'd be happy to put it up there. Down in the description box, you'll find directions on how to send it to me. All right, now, for today's project, it's this. And my wife and I have a little disagreement. I started out turning a platter and decided to leave it thicker than I usually do a platter, and I just call this a shallow bowl. Now she says because it's that shallow, it's still a platter. So she wins, what am I gonna say? Just let it go at that. Now, I learned a real lesson on turning this. This wood was hard and dry as concrete that has cured for two or three months. And I had a real hard time turning this. So I finally did something I don't really like to do, but rather than tell me everything twice, why don't we just go take a look at how I put this together. All right, let's get some work done. I went over to my local hardwood supplier yesterday just to see what was in there, if there was anything new, and I found something I've never heard of before. It's called Movinge. It's an African wood, sometimes known as African satin wood. It's got a nice straw color to it, a pleasant grain, and it was actually on sale. So I decided to pick up this piece just to see what it's like. And I want to make a platter. It's only six inches wide, inch and three quarters deep, not really thick enough to make a bowl out of. So I'm going to cut two 12 inch pieces off of here, glue them together, I've jointed this side, and then see what I can come up with for a platter. So if you care to stick around, let's go see what this looks like as a platter. All right, I have the blank ready to go. The glue is well dried now. I put this through the drum sander. It's not necessary. I did it because I wanted to see just how good the joint was visibly. And it's gorgeous. If I didn't know it was there, I don't think I could even find it. So I'm very happy with that. Now what I want to do is find the center. I've got my center finder here. I'll find the 12 inch mark on all four sides. Okay, I'll put my scratch all in the center to hold it and then just run this pencil around. Now I'm going to take this to the bandsaw, cut that circle out just to make it a little easier to start the turning. Then I'm going to bring it back. Now that I know where the center is, I can put my center finder on here and I can drop this face plate that I made a while ago. It's a 10 inch face plate and I'm going to use that as a glue block rather than putting screws in for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't really know how deep I'm going to want to go with this. I haven't predetermined anything about it really. Also, I'll be using hot glue, which I have a lot of faith in. And a couple words about that. First of all, I'll only use glue around the edge. And the reason for that is, if I put hot glue between the glue block and the surface, I don't know for sure that the glue on one side is gonna be exactly the same thickness as on the other. So when I put it down, this is exaggerated, but it might be a little bit higher on one side than the other. I've already made this nice and parallel the two edges, so I wanna keep it that way. Second thing about hot glue, I like to use lots of it around the outside. You can't use too much, I don't believe, and I like to make sure that before I put it on, the glue is real, real hot. So I'll take this over to the bandsaw now, cut this out, put this on, and then you can join me at the lathe. If you should decide to try turning this wood, one thing you'll want to keep in mind is that it has a very high quantity of silica. Think of it as sand embedded in the wood, if you like. 
and that means you'll be sharpening your tools a lot. Now having said that, this is going to be my very first cut and I'll see how it really works out. I'm just going to chew up the outside here first. I don't know if you can see it, but my tool is bouncing a lot. This is not an easy wood to cut. Extremely hard. I don't think this is going to be one of the more pleasant projects. Very difficult to cut, and it's coming off just like dust more than it is like any kind of curlies. I'll just keep on working on this. I think this is going to take a long time, so I'll likely edit out an awful lot of the video. As I'm sure you can see, the dust coming off of here is just phenomenal. So I'm going to be wearing my Trend Air Shield and running my overhead air filter. So oh, for audio, enjoy the music. I want to put a recess in here for my four jaw chuck to fit into. And I need three and three eighths of an inch for that. So I have set my calipers to half of that, one and 11 sixteenths. I'm gonna put the right arm on the center, which I found right there. And turning this, I'll use the left arm to scribe. Now I'm going to use a parting tool and Cindy Droz's square recess tool to clean this up. Well, that's a lot nicer than I expected it to be. It's pretty smooth in there. I very rarely like a flat bottom on anything. I like a foot for it to stand on and just lift it up a little bit. Doesn't have to be a lot. And this is no exception. I think I want a foot about this wide right here. Now I'm going to start to turn this away. Not very much of it and just do a rounded edge on this. Alright, I'm going to use my parting tool to define the edge here and then I just put a fresh edge on my bowl gouge and I'm going to carry on with that. Boy, this is, without a doubt, the most difficult wood I've ever turned. And I've turned some stuff I really didn't care for. I sure hope this turns up to look nice because 
This has turned out to be a lot of work. I'm going to shear scrape this part now. See if I can get it turned a little better. Well, that does help a lot. The shear scraping has really straightened that out, smoothed it out. Not perfect, certainly going to be some sanding done. Now it's time to start to put a bit of a curve on the corner here. Well, that's not looking too bad, but it's going to take a lot of sanding. And then I'll be back. I have it sanded to 240 grit now. And I'm not going to lie to you, this was tough sanding. The way I like to sand is just to take a strip of sandpaper and keep it moving. Especially with something like 80 grit, if you don't keep it moving, you're going to dig a trench. But I went through four strips of 80 grit like this and then used 100, 120, 150, 180, 220 and 240. And I'm quite pleased with it. It's not complete but the sanding is. Now I want to drill a recess for my logo coin, put a few rings on here for decoration and then I'm going to carry on to do the finishing part. I've used my pyrography pen to sign it, date it, and identify the wood species. Now I'm going to go to doing the finishing. First thing I'm going to do is put on two coats of methyl hydrate and zincer seal coat mixed 50-50 as a sanding sealer. And I was reminded by Bert when I did my last video that I should mention why I wear rubber gloves when I'm putting on this sanding sealer. Methyl hydrate is very toxic. You don't want it getting anywhere near your skin. It can be absorbed into your body and it never leaves and can be a very big health hazard. So please, wear protective gloves when you're using methyl hydrate in any situation. It's a very good idea, good for your health. I will be sanding after each coat of this sanding sealer and then I'll get on to the finishing. This is the sanding sealer I'm going to use. I will be applying it just using some shop towel trying to get a good coverage without being too thick. The more you put on the more you got to sand off and it does gum up your sandpaper very rapidly. So I like to put it on thin. I'm going to start the finishing using Tom Ackley's abrasive sanding paste. In my last video I did a review of his abrasive sanding paste and his polish restoring paste and I was very very pleased with the job they did so I'm going to try it on this. That was on maple which is a far different wood from what this is. So I'll start by working it in as well as I can, Just turning it at 100 rpm. I'll work this in as well as I can and I'll be back to show you just what kind of job it does in a couple of minutes. Well, it won't feel like a couple of minutes to you. I've worked in the paste as well as I can. Now I'm going to turn it up to a thousand RPM and I'm going to just keep taking it off until no more of the paste shows up on the shop towel.
All right, no more paste is showing up on here. And this is looking very nice. So I'm gonna to continue to do the rest of this and I'll be back when I finish that. Well, that paste has done a beautiful job. All the tiny scratches that I could see before from the sandpaper are totally gone. So now I'm gonna go on to the next one, which is the polish restoring paste. I'm gonna put that on and then I'll turn it up to 1,000 RPM, probably even 2,000 RPM, to buff it. I'm just gonna put lots on here, make sure I've got it all covered, and I'll be back to do that buffing. The last time I used this, I was using it on maple, which is a far different wood from what this is, so let's see what kind of job it'll do on here. I'm turning it up to 2,000 RPM. Wow, I think that looks great. Very pleased with it. I love the feel of it. It's so silky smooth and not slick like plastic. All right, I'm just gonna glue in my logo coin and then I can flip this around, reverse it into my four jaw chuck and turn the other side. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but I'm very happy with this. Forcing the putty knife in between the two layers of wood can be very difficult with hot glue. Pouring a little isopropyl alcohol on helps quite a bit. Now, with the bowl blank reversed, it's time to turn the top. That hot glue did a good job of lifting some of this grain, so I have to take this down until I get past that. I'm just doing this because I'm curious as to whether a beading tool would work on this wood. Not too bad. I don't think it's uh, rounding them over enough that I would want to use it on here. Just a little curiosity. My original intention, as I said, was to make a platter, but I think I'm going to leave this as a wide-rimmed, shallow bowl. One of my fears is that when I'm out this far, pushing this way, I might just dislodge it from the chuck. So I'm gonna sharpen my tool again, 
and try to do more of a cut across the face as much as I can. I have switched to a half inch bowl gouge with a different grind and as you can see it's doing a much better job. I have said a number of times that I don't really like using scrapers. I don't know, it's just, I'm an old school guy and this just doesn't feel like turning. But there are times when it's the only thing that'll work. And I realize there are far more accomplished turners than I am who use them all the time. Anyway, this did get the results I'm looking for. Now I'm going to be sanding this, finishing it the same way I did the back and then I'll be back to show you the results. All right, lesson learned. I've always been a fan of turning tools, and when I say turning tools, I'm talking about gouges, skew chisels, things of that nature. And I have never been a fan of scrapers, but now I have to admit, there certainly is a place for using a scraper. One of those, apparently, is hard, dry wood. Now, it's the first time I've actually tried one on real hardwood, so maybe this was just an aberration, but I'll certainly be giving it another shot at some point and see. So I wanna thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe you learned something. I know I'm always happy when I learn something. Why should we ever stop learning? So I hope you'll come back next time. In the meantime, have a great day in your shop and be safe. If you like this, click the like button Feel free to share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. Take care now.